Hello students, this is the fourth part of the series of length measurement and today we are going to learn how to find out the diameter of the orifice which is there in this glass tube. Now for this we use a very special instrument and we call it as a traveling microscope. So first of all, let's understand what are the parts of this traveling microscope. students as we know that the very first thing we have to do is to find out the least count of the instrument. Now if you look at the traveling microscope carefully there are two scale one is horizontal scale and other is a vertical scale. Both scale are identical and both have two parts. One we call as a main scale and other is a vernier scale. If you look at the main scale you will notice that a distance of one centimeter is marked by equidistant 20 marks that means there are 20 divisions in 1 centimeter of the main scale which makes the least count of the main scale as 0.5 mm and if you go to the vernier scale you will notice that it is marked as 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 and there are 10 divisions from 0 to 0.1 and again 10 divisions from 0.1 to 0.2 and so on. So in total there are 50 divisions on the vernier scale. And if you look at the last division of the vernier scale, it is coinciding with the 49th division on the main scale. Including the smaller divisions also. Right, I am counting the smaller divisions too. Which means that this is equal to 49 multiplied by 0.5 mm. So if one has to calculate how much is the one division on vernier scale that is 49.5 divided by 50 mm. And to calculate the least count of the traveling microscope this is one main scale division, the smallest one and what vernier scale division count? One main scale division smallest counts 0.5 mm and this counts 49 by 50 into 0.5 mm and if you calculate this comes out to be 0.5 multiplied by 1 by 50 and is equals to 0.01 mm. So the traveling microscope can measure up to 0.1 mm. Though it is a vernier scale, but deliberately what we did, we increased the number of divisions as well as we also created in between divisions of a millimeter. So by this we are able to achieve the least count which is equals to 0.1 mm. The experimental setup to find out the diameter of the tube is this where you have this tube adjusted on a stand horizontally and we are able to see with this microscope the orifice of the tube. So students now we are going to take the observation. For taking the observation we have to keep the tube horizontal and we have to adjust the microscope we have to adjust the distance between the microscope and the end of the tube 
while keeping this end illuminated use a separate lamp to illuminate this part so that you can view it easily in the field of view of the microscope you will get a circle like this with the cross wire and a brighter portion which actually is the orifice of this tube now to do the measurement we have to use the horizontal as well as the vertical scale horizontal scale is when when you are moving it means that when you are moving you are turning microscope in horizontal direction you have to use the vertical wire of the cross wire adjust it in such a way that it touches the one end of the orifice image and record what is there on the main scale it means that zero of the vernier scale where it actually rests in our case we found that it rests between 9.5 and 10 so record the lesser value 9.5 and then see the which number of the vernier scale division is coinciding with any one of the main scale in our case we found that this is 21st division so to calculate this position what we can do is write this as 9.5 and add to it 21 multiplied by the least count of the treading microscope and this comes out to be 9.71 mm so this is one observation that we recorded and we call it as x1 then move with the help of the adjusting screw this vertical cross wire till you get the other end of this image and again do the similar recording this time our main scale is crossing just crossing the 11 mm and vernier scale division that is the sixth vernier scale division is coinciding with the main scale any one of the main scale division so it means this is 11.0 plus 6 multiplied by 0 0.01 and it comes out to be 11.06 mm so once these two values are obtained take the difference between the two and that gives you the diameter of this orifice observed with the help of one scale similarly we have to use the vertical scale but once again have you noticed I have not calculated the zero error in this measurement no need for this because if there is some error in the measurement of x1 that is going to be the same error in x2 and you have to be taking the difference of the two so there is no need to find out the zero error in this type of measurement same way we have to record in a vertical scale but in a vertical scale we have to keep the horizontal of the cross wire at one end of it just tangent to this image record it and again do it for the lower side also and this way you calculate the diameter recorded by the vertical scale now take three observations three observations using the horizontal scale and three observation using the vertical scale and then you can take the average of these diameters to find out the value So as we discussed, we have to record the number of observation using the horizontal scale as well as the vertical scale because sometimes the orifice may not be perfectly circular. So in order to just do the minimum error, we take the two perpendicular directions for the measurement of the diameter. Now we have taken the observation 
and we found that the diameter is 1.35, 1.38, 1.43, 1.37, 1.44 1 1 and 1.49 millimeter. In these three observations on the horizontal scale and three on the vertical scale. So the average value comes out to be 1.41 mm. So we can mention the diameter of the orifice is 1.41 plus minus 0.01 mm. That is the least count of our instrument. So when the instrument is doing the measurement, it is likely to give you the value within the limit of its least count. So this is how we can measure the diameter. However, this instrument can be used even to find out the diameter of a wire. You can fix a wire as we have seen. We have fixed this tube horizontally and then use that, uh, this microscope to get the vertical line of the cross wire at one end and the other end also. This way we can also measure the diameter. So the number of applications of this traveling microscope. So I hope by now you have learned some of the important instruments for the measurement of length. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening.